to welcome and introduce our guest speaker, who really needs no introduction to this group. But today, in my capacity as a member of the program committee, and where for many years I served along with Flood, with Kwanian and State Representative Alan Hubbard. Before Alan was so compromised, I believe it was in February, he said that he hoped that he would be able to be here in August and September. And he wanted Jason Munpower, his long kind friend, associate, and member of the legislature to be invited again. And as we think about the importance of community, connection, responsibility, and our special commitment to Ellen Hubbard, it is my honor to follow up my promise to him, although I must say that I said no. We're not going to plan that far ahead, but of course you know we lost him several months ago. And so today, as a reminder, Jason Mumpower was elected to the Tennessee 35th Controller of the Treasury on January 13th of 2021. He is responsible for leading the Office of the Controller for the Treasury, which comp uh, comprises 12 divisions and more than 600 employees. And his responsibility is also to ensure that that office fulfills its mission, to make government work better. Don't we like missions that are succinct and focused? To make government work better. He is currently serving his second term. And prior to his service with the controller's office, he served in the Tennessee General Assembly as the state representative for Sullivan and Johnson counties in the Tennessee General Assembly. Jason Mumpower is a proven leader. He was first elected to the office at the early age of 23, and during his 14-year tenure, he held positions almost uncompromised in any way um, for both House Minority Leader and House Minority Leader. He joined the Comptroller's Office in December of 2010, initially serving as Deputy Comptroller and as Chief of Staff. And while he has been awarded many, many uh, prestigious awards and recognitions throughout his distinguished career, I think it's particularly important in 2023, he was named the top leader among large Middle Tennessee businesses as part of Tennessee's top workplaces competition. He's been named the Legislator of the Year on multiple occasions by several organizations. And additionally, he has received the National Federation of Independent uh, Business Guardians of Small Business Award and the Future Farmers of America's Lifetime Alumni Award. He is a proud graduate of King University. Always wants to say though, when he graduated, it was King College, at earning his BA in Economics and a minor in Political Science. Notably, he also graduated from Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government program that was designed, or is still, designed for senior executives in state and local government. Not surprising, Jason is an Eagle Scout, and he's active in many community organizations and projects, including the Rotary Club of Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia, and three chapters of um, Chambers of Commerce, Kingsport, Bristol, and Johnson County. He's really a chain, Chamber of Commerce advocate. And he proudly uh, currently serves as a member of King University's Board of Trustees. He lives in Bristol, uh, along with his wife, Alicia, and their son, Max. Juan Ince, let's give him a very warm welcome. So uh, thank you very much. It, always, it is good to remember uh, there's always new folks, and I actually have some notes in here for new folks. 
I, I do appreciate very much uh, Alan always having invited me in the past. I think I was trying to look back and remember, I've been here several years in a row. I mean, like six or seven years in a row. And so I always appreciate being invited back somewhere. It's, it's it, more of an honor than being invited somewhere the first time. And I appreciate Alan and Mary Lee, I appreciate you continuing that tradition. I, of course, have always been here on or around my birthday. And I, in fact, I remember I was here one time on my birthday <clears throat> a few years ago. I'm a little early this year. My birthday is September 22nd. Um, and this year I'll be 50 years old. This, is, this year is my 50th birthday, September 22nd. And uh, in fact, my, my wife and I have been talking about it. I, I'm not sure why it comes to her mind, but uh, uh, we've been doing a little end of life planning recently. Um, <laughs> And uh, we were talking about that the other day, and, and I said, well, Alicia, I, I, uh, I think I would just prefer to be cremated, you know, when that time comes. And she said, well, that is great. I love that idea. And I said, man, you're awful enthusiastic about that. And she said, well, it's the only way I'm ever going to have a husband with a smoking hot body. Uh, uh, and I said, well, you know, better at some point. Uh, so it is good to be here with you uh, again on the, on the eve of my 50th birthday. Uh, good to be back again with you to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in the state of Tennessee. Uh, I'll mention quickly, it's not part of my presentation, of course. You know your legislature is in a special session right now. Um, and uh, the legislators have been in Nashville this week. I've been in Nashville this week as the legislature has been in session. A lot going on there. Uh, the special session is not over. It will continue next week and, and maybe the week after that. Lots of complicated issues on the table uh, as they, they talk about school safety and mental health and, and, and just a whole variety of issues. It's, it's certainly a topic that evokes a lot of strong feelings one way or, one way or the other. Um, and, and so you'll want to stay tuned to that uh, again. Uh, we have a great legislative delegation. Uh, John Lundberg, uh, uh, Timothy Hill is back in the legislative delegation. Bud Halsey, uh, John Crawford all do a great job and uh, they're on the job for you right now. So it's 1238 and I'm going to have to move very fast. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, although I had some uh, repeat information for those that have never been here before. You know, it's my pleasure to serve as Comptroller of the Treasury, a statewide official. Uh, my office is in Nashville on the first floor of the Capitol, directly across the hall from Governor's office, Governor Lee's office. Uh, uh, Governor, the Governor and I often joke, it's great to have your auditor right across the hall where they can look in on you at any point in time. Uh, I was with the Governor this week, had breakfast with him on Tuesday, uh, and so he's very involved down there this week too. Uh, in Tennessee, we're fortunate. Um, most people here, no doubt, maybe everybody here is a Tennessean. I hope you arrived happy and proud to be a Tennessean. I hope you leave here today uh, feeling even better about being a Tennessean as I talk to you about some of the things we have going on in Tennessee. Of course, as comptroller, uh, you know, I'm all about the money. Uh, every local government dollar, every state government dollar, every federal government dollar, every utility dollar uh, is looked at by my office. Uh, 617 employees, I have eight offices across the state. Uh, we have people in communities across the state every day. Uh, as Mary Lee said, we are working to make government work better at every level. Uh, and so we have lots of responsibilities. Let's see if I can get this thing to click. Uh, I always talk to you, of course, uh, about Tennessee state budget, the budget uh, that uh, we, uh, began on July 1st this year. July 1st is New Year's Day in the state of Tennessee. We operate on, on a fiscal year that begins July 1st. $56.2 billion uh, is how much it takes to operate the state of Tennessee this year. Everything we do in Tennessee altogether, $56.2 billion. This is my 27th year in government. The first week of November, I'll actually start my 28th year of Tennessee state government. When I started in the legislature many years ago, our budget was around $15 billion. 
uh, so it's now 56.2, uh, which is which is quite an increase. I have some information in here. Uh, am I pushing the wrong button? There we go. Uh, to tell you about how the budget process works, and I won't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, that was that background for people that haven't seen this before because we're on limited time. I'm going to move past that a little bit and talk to you about uh, where does that money come from? The 56 point, because this is going to become especially relevant at the end. Where does that money come from? You see right up there in the red, the biggest portion uh, comes from state revenue. Of course, we're a sales tax based economy. Uh, the sales tax dollars, the federal government, 18.8. Uh, we have, of course, service fees and tuition and student fees that fill in the rest. And we do have some, some debt, some bonds, very, very uh, small down there amount of debt. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we are, you as a Tennessean are the lowest, uh, you have the lowest debt burden of anybody in America of states that have debt. There are a couple of states that don't have any debt, but of the states that do, you have the lowest per capita share in the United States. You also, as a Tennessean, are among the lowest tax citizens in the nation when you average out state and local taxes together, Tennessee is consistently ranked as the lowest tax state in the nation or depending on who's taking the survey, if not the lowest, the, the 49th or the, the 48th. So e either way you go, either way you look at it in Tennessee, uh, you get great bang for your buck. Uh, you're the lowest taxed in the nation. Uh, so you take that money, you take that 56.2 billion, you take where it comes from, where does it go? Obviously, you know from your house, your household, uh, your priorities are easy to determine based on where you spend your money. In Tennessee, our top expense continues to be education, 14.7 billion, followed very closely uh, by health care, 10 care, 14.5 billion, uh, other social service programs, 8 billion, transportation, 6.1 billion, and corrections, uh, 1.4 billion. So those are our five largest expenditures. And out of the 56.2 billion, you can see 44.7 billion is encompassed, uh, the great majority of the budget in those five services alone. So moving on, let's talk about some things that I think are Im important and uh, are, are ways that your legislature decided to uh, spend that money this year. Um, First off, I will say transportation. Now, I don't know how many of you spend any time outside of the Tri-Cities. You drive to Knoxville, you drive to Nashville, you drive past Nashville down to Memphis. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you do, or even if you're in the Tri-Cities, you know that transportation is a key issue. I mean, it's a key issue for the economy, it's a key issue for people just, just getting around. And for many years, since the 1970s, um, Tennessee has been a dedicated, had a dedicated transportation fund based on a gasoline tax. And the money we have spent on transportation has, has come from that gasoline tax. Well, I will tell you that we have had, and, and, and that's been a key, we have no road debt. We're one of the only states in the nation that have no road debt, and that is key, uh, I will tell you. But the legislature this year and the governor and the governor showed leadership here. We've had very uh, strong years in Tennessee for three or four years now, particularly since the pandemic, where we have had record revenue growth. And uh, we have built up some, some one-time money uh, in, our, in our state coffers. And the governor and the legislature decided to use $3 billion of that excess revenue to dedicate to expanding Tennessee's transportation needs. Um, as you do travel west from here, as you do go through Knoxville, it is, I, I will tell you, it came back from the pandemic even worse than it was before. Uh, if you've been there lately, and I'm there every week, it is, it is intense, uh, the traffic. You, of course, Nashville has been intense for a long time, I-40, I-65, I-24, uh, again, key to the economy. You know, Tennessee is a long state. We have so much commerce traveling through Tennessee every day. Uh, it really is amazing. 
and uh, of course down Memphis and Chattanooga as well. If you try to get in or out of Chattanooga starting about 3 p.m. every day, it is intense. Uh, so this $3 billion is going to be dedicated to enhancing primarily those heavily congested zones, uh, which is very important. You say, why does that matter to me here in, in Upper East Tennessee and the Tri-Cities? Again, you have a lot of commerce. You have a lot of the economy on those interstates every day. We are going to see inter primarily interstate improvements here as well, but it is going to help statewide. In addition to the $3 billion dollars, uh, that is going really for those those interstate improvements. Uh, 300 million is going to be spread across the state to each uh, local road department for local government road improvements, which is just a great, great amount of money coming to those local road offices. You're going to see that um, <clears throat> very soon. The legislature also provided uh, 232 million to enhance school safety. The state of Tennessee is now paying to have a school resource officer in every school in Tennessee. Uh, obviously, uh, some schools have had that for a while, uh, but, and, and you know, and that's why they're having the special session this week, there was, there was a, a, a tragic school shooting in Nashville uh, this year that, that spurred this, and um, there, the state is going to pay to have a school resource officer uh, in, in every public school uh, starting this budget year. Um, the legislature and the governor also prioritized Tennessee teachers. Uh, they put money into the budget to make sure that by 20, and this has already started actually as of July 1st, uh, that Tennessee teachers will have a minimum salary of $50,000 a year, uh, which will make Tennessee a top 10 state for teacher pay in the nation. Uh, and I know that is important. Of course, we did continue to uh, build our rainy day fund in Tennessee, something that, that helps us keep our strong uh, credit rating, and uh, we work to reduce debt and reduce future liabilities. Now, with the great strong economy we have had in Tennessee, again, we're a sales tax-based economy, and the legislature and the governor remember where that money comes from, and they did uh, want to give some of it back to us, to the people of Tennessee. And we did that uh, through a three-month dedicated sales tax holiday on grocery items. We are in that right now for August, September, and October this year. Uh, your grocery items, your food items, are completely sales tax free. Uh, so when you're done here, if you want to walk to the other side of the building and stock up, uh, you can do that tax-free. You can do that again tax-free till the end of October. In addition to that sales tax relief on groceries, um, and you say, why groceries? I have found one thing that most people have in common is they need to eat. And um, that's observed broadly, and so that's why the sales tax break on food. Um, in addition to that, uh, we had some important uh, business tax relief, and, and business tax relief is money that is cycled back into the economy. Uh, we've cut small taxes, or cut taxes on small businesses uh, by raising, raising exemption levels, and uh, uh, we have affected the excise tax as well by raising, raising the level there, and that's something that will help keep our economy strong. Now, I will say we do have a very strong economy in Tennessee right now. As a matter of fact, we in July set a record. For the first time in history, Tennessee's unemployment rate has reached 3. If you live in Tennessee and you want a job, you can get a job. Uh, make no mistake about it, 3.1 percent. I will say um, that um, for those of you that want to go a, a little bit deeper, again, I said in Tennessee, the unemployment rate 3.1 percent, the national unemployment 3.5 percent. In Sullivan County, as of July, it was 4.1 percent, a little, little higher here in Sullivan County. One thing, if you want to go a layer deeper, um, that you have to talk about when you talk about the unemployment rate, as good as that is, is something called the labor force participation rate which is the measure of people in the workforce and actively seeking work. And, and that is still not where we need it to be. Since the pandemic, uh, we had some people drop out of the labor force. 
like if you go places and you try to think where are all the people that need to be working uh, we have had some number of those people drop out of the labor force and they haven't come back yet in Tennessee in Tennessee uh, our labor force participation rate is 60.1 percent uh, whereas in the nation it's a little better 63.1 percent um, we still do need some people uh, to come back in the labor force. Interestingly, and, and, and again, my degree's in economics, and, and that's what drives me a lot of the time, we could really parse this out because there have been points in time since the pandemic where we have had different segments of the labor force uh, that we've been missing. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, uh, females, working females, dropped out of the labor force in large part. At this point in time, the segment that we are missing is uh, 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 white men between the age of about 20 and 35. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, but we need them to be working a little more than they are or actively seeking work. Uh, but we can, you know, you get into it with the Department of Labor and Workforce Development, which does great work. We can really drill down and, and, and talk about that, and that's the kind of stuff uh, that I like to do. Um, so, now I will say, again, record low unemployment rate. People want to be in Tennessee. Business wants to be in Tennessee. Uh, you have seen, we all know the stories. The stories are true about people flocking to this state from across this nation. Uh, businesses are flocking in. Uh, in 2022, we had another uh, top-notch year. Uh, all these companies uh, that you see came to Tennessee, 16,135 new jobs being created in 2022, $8.6 billion of capital investment, 107 uh, economic development deals bringing primarily large companies to Tennessee. But as you know, large companies are not the backbone of the Tennessee economy. What is the backbone of the Tennessee economy? small business and agriculture uh, right there that's the backbone and let me tell you this so my friend down the hall the secretary of state the secretary of state's office tracks new business filings if you create a new business in tennessee you have to do a filing with the secretary of state's office in the second quarter of 2023 which is april may and june the second quarter of 2023 uh, a record was set, almost 20,000 uh, new entities filed in Tennessee, and over the, that was just in the, in the second quarter, 20,000 new businesses filed in Tennessee. Those are small businesses. And in the past year, uh, the past four quarters, over 77,000 new businesses have filed, uh, and employment rose by 84,600 new jobs in Tennessee. People want to come to Tennessee, people want to do business in Tennessee, and thankfully, who's taken these jobs? People are moving to Tennessee. Um, in 2022, in the Comptroller's Office, among the things we do, we are the repository for census data in Tennessee. So I can tell you, in 2022, we added 83,000 people to our state, which is the seventh highest total of any state in the nation. Now that does measure births versus deaths. In Tennessee, we are still having more births than deaths, which is what you, the way you want it to be. Uh, but interestingly, in 2022, Tennessee reached a population of over 7 million people for the first time in history, and we moved from being the 16th most populous state to being the 15th most populous state in the nation. We overtook, anybody want to guess? The state, we overtook the state of Massachusetts uh, to become the 15th most populous state, which tells you they cram an awful lot of people in a very small space uh, up there. We're a little more spread out down here in Tennessee. Now, interestingly, if you think about 83,000 people moving to Tennessee, that is like the population of Kingsport and the population of Bristol, Tennessee added together, dropped into the state uh, uh, in the last year. And so that is very interesting. I will say uh, that out of the uh, 
I told you that is the uh, seventh highest in the nation, that population growth in the last year. The top seven states, which I find are interesting, are Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee, and Arizona. Those are the top seven growth states in the nation, uh, which tells you what people like is sunshine and no income tax. Uh, <laughs> When you, look at, when you look at the qualities that those states share in common. Now, I will say, and I know I've gone fast, and I know I've got four minutes, and I'm going to close this thing out, but uh, I will say, looking down the road at the economy, uh, our economy in Tennessee is very strong. Um, we, we closed our, our budget year very strong, but I will say that we have noted that our revenue growth has begun to slow. And when I say that it's begun to slow, it really is, is beginning to get back to normal. Our economy has been on a hyperdrive, just like most, most economies in the nation since the pandemic. And uh, it is beginning to normalize. I think that's happening because of inflation that, that won't seem to go away. You know, that we have uh, the Federal Reserve with interest rate hike after interest rate hike that I think is beginning to take an effect. Our, our home sales, it's beginning to affect, especially those first time home buyers. I mean, the interest rates you have to get right now to finance uh, the purchase of a home or even the purchase of a vehicle. It is slowing the economy. I'm not saying we're, we're recessionary. I, 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 we've talked about that a lot for the, for the past couple years uh, and, and don't know what we're gonna see, but I can tell you we're watching it very closely as we get ready to make our revenue projections for the next budget year. We do that in November. That's something I'm watching very closely. On September 25th, we're gonna be in New York City meeting with the bond rating agency. Tennessee still is a triple, triple A state, one of only 13 in the nation. I think we're gonna sustain that uh, when we go back to New York here in a couple, couple weeks. Uh, I will say some of you may be familiar with it, uh, of course, in Tennessee, we're, again, we're still the number one state for fiscal stability as ranked by US, U.S. News and World Report. I told you about your low debt burden and your low taxes. Uh, uh, we have strong reserves and a strong pension program among the best states for business. Uh, we have a lot of good things going on in Tennessee. Um, we have a program in the Comptroller's Office that, that we operate. Some of you may be familiar with it. Our tax relief program. Uh, for 50 years, as long as I've been alive, uh, since 1973, uh, millions of Tennesseans, low-income, elderly, and disabled, and 100% service-connected disabled veterans uh, receive property tax relief uh, as allocated by the legislature, and uh, that is something that we're very proud of. It's 12.59. I have one more thing to say. I appreciate you for having me here. <laughs> Uh, if we were at if we were at church, I'd say appreciate you, brother. Uh, I appreciate being back. This is a bumper sticker. I have a condo in Nashville in the Sylvan Park community. If you know where this is, this is the bumper of a car that's constantly parked at the entrance of my condo. And I got out and took this picture myself. And I said, this is now the last photo in all my slideshows. So. <laughs> Appreciate you having me here. I'll be glad to come back next year uh, if you want me to. Uh, all things constant. And, uh, you know, if you want to stick around and ask me a couple questions, I'll be glad to do that. It's still 12.59. I'm finishing on time. Thank you very much.